Here we begin the third section of our video, Programming the Environment. In this section, we will first introduce the key concepts which comprise a Markov Decision Process, or MDP. We've talked about state action and reward, so we'll focus on model or the transition model. Then we'll look at an MDP policy solution to our running 2x2 two two grid example using R. We'll proceed by looking at additional important functions in the MDP toolbox using R. Then we'll move to yet another R example, looking at the very important Bellman function or Bellman iteration procedure to find an optimal value function for our original 3x4 grid world. And finally, we'll end the section with a user R exercise building the environment for our original 3x4 grid world. So let's continue with our 2x2 two two grid R example, but this time we'll look at a solution that uses the MDP toolbox. So in this video, we'll cover the basics for framing a reinforcement learning problem as a Markov decision process, and we'll build the state action model reward framework, focusing really on the model. And then we will go into our extended R example, demonstrating the 2x2 two two optimal policy as an MDP solution. So this slide encapsulates the important concepts of a Markov decision process. Now, if you look at the MDP problem concepts, states, model, actions, rewards, we've talked about states, actions, and rewards, so we don't need to elaborate on that. The critical property or difference between the Markov decision process approach to reinforcement learning and the model free approach is that with Markov decision processes, we have some sort of explicit knowledge about the so called transition probabilities or the transition model or transition function. This is a probabilistic function. You see it here as the probability of moving into new state or state S prime given that you're in some existing state S and you take some action A. The transition model describes the rules of the game that you are playing. You could describe it as the physics of the world you are in. It ends up being the probability that you'll transition to state S prime given that you were in state S and you took action A. Model-free reinforcement learning problems have no information about these transition probabilities. Additionally, we should mention the Markovian pro property, which is that only the present matters. What this means is that in our transition function, the probability that you transition to new state S prime, given that you took action A, only depends on the current state S. It is not related or dependent on any other states that you visited previously. So these four concepts by themselves states, model or transition model, action and reward, combined with the Markovian property, define what is known as an MDP. An MDP may be considered a problem. So we have one more concept to discuss, and that is policy. Whenever we have a problem like an MDP, we also want to have a solution. So the solution to an MDP is a policy. And what this policy does, it's a function pi that Given any particular state, it returns an action. It tells you what action to take if you're in any particular state. And there is a special policy, pi star, that's called the optimal policy. The optimal policy maximizes your long-term expected rewards. Recall previously that we noted some of the differences between supervised learning and reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is more dependent on the state action reward triples, whereas supervised learning is dependent on the relationship between the state action pairs. A little more on what a policy is. You may remember that in our 3x4 grid world, we said that our optimal policy was up, up, right, 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 if you were beginning from the start state. 
This isn't exactly what a policy is. This really should be better described as a plan. This is a series of actions that we hope to take given that we are starting out in the start state. What a policy prescribes is that for every state that you might be in, what is the action that you should take in that state? So in our 3 by 4 grid world example, we could begin conceivably from any possible state, and whatever state we're in, the optimal policy would prescribe what action to take. So we could rewrite our previous plan in this fashion. We could say that the optimal policy action, if we're in state 1-1, one, one, is up. The optimal policy action, if we're in state 1-2, is up, and so forth. Note that in reinforcement learning, we are talking about policies, not plans, not series of actions, but what action to take in each possible state that you are in. So here is our familiar 2x2 two two grid world. We've looked at several ways to solve this, and now we're going to use MDP. There are four states. You cannot go through the red wall between S1 and S4. You can't go outside the boundary. There are rewards of minus 1 in states 1, 2, and 3, and state 4 has a reward of plus 10, and you can try to execute the actions left, right, up, or down, whichever state you are in. So let's find a solution for this 2x2 two two grid problem using the MDP toolbox in R. First thing we need to do, of course, is to load the MDP toolbox library, so we do that. Now, in order to solve this problem, what's new here really is that we're going to have to create individual matrices with pre-specified random transition probabilities for each action. This is new, and what these transition matrices reflect is the, the stochasticity or the randomness of action actually taken in comparison to the action that is selected. So let's say in this case that when the agent selects an action, such as up, down, left, or right, there is a 70% probability that that action actually occurs. There's a 20% probability that the agent will stay in the same state, that is, that no action will actually take place. And there's a 10% probability that the agent will move in a lateral direction to the action selected. So in order to implement these transition probabilities, we are going to create four functions, four matrices, up, down, left, and right, that reflect these probabilities of actually moving in the direction stated. Note that we have four states, so the probability matrix for each one of the actions should be a square 4x4 four four matrix. Let's load in the probabilities for the up action in the matrix, and then I'll walk you through just that one matrix to explain what the values in the matrix actually reflect. So we load it up, and we can take a look at it. This is the way that you should read the values in this matrix. The columns represent the states that the action that the agent might be in, and the rows represent what state the agent might transition to if he or she takes the particular action chosen. Now, note that all of these probabilities relate to the action of moving up only. So what do these numbers mean? Well, just looking at the first row, if the agent is in state S1 and tries to go up, there is a 100% probability that the agent will remain in state S1. Well, why is that? Well, because S1 is bounded on the upside by a boundary, so the agent can't move up, which means if the agent chooses to go up in S1, it would stay in place. There is also a 20% probability that when the agent chooses to go up, that the agent doesn't move. So that's 70% plus 20% that the agent will remain in S1. 
And the only other possibility, there's a 10% chance that the agent will move laterally, and the lateral movement is also bounded by a boundary, so that's not possible either. So if the agent is in S1 and chooses to go up, there's a 100% probability that the agent will remain in S1. Let's look at the second row. If the agent is in S2, the second column, and tries to go up, then there's a 70% probability that action will succeed and the agent will move to S1. There's a 20% probability that the agent will remain stationary, as we noted, and there's a 10% probability that the agent will actually move laterally to up and end up in S3. So that is what these three probabilities represent. If the agent's in S2, 70% that going up will go to S1, 20% will stay in S2, 10% that it'll go right to S3. Similarly, the third row, if the agent is in state S3 and tries to go up, there's a 70% probability that the agent will go up into S4. There's a 20% probability the agent will stay in S3, and there's a 10% probability that the agent will move left to S2. And then finally, if the agent is already in state S4, the fourth column, and tries to go up, there's a 100% probability the agent will stay there because there's a 70% chance try to go up, and it can't because of the boundary, 20% chance of staying in place, and 10% of moving laterally, which is also impossible. So that is how you read these transition probability matrices. And let's load up in. So we load up again. It looks like that. Now we could walk through each of these left, right, and down, but I don't think it's necessary. And if you need additional instruction, you can note that I have annotated the code with these descriptions so that you can reconstruct what these values mean on your own. So let's load in all of the matrices, probability matrices, left, down, and right. And then we'll take a quick look at them over here in the console. And you can see them over here. So let's aggregate these matrices into a list, a list which is object T. And then let's create a matrix with the rewards. And this matrix, again, if we have four states, it's going to be a four by four matrix. It's easier to understand. If you enter state S1 from anywhere, you get a reward of minus one. If you enter state S2 from anywhere, you get a reward of minus one. If you enter state S3 from anywhere, you get a reward of minus one. If you enter state S4 from anywhere, you get a reward of 10. So in the reward matrix, the rows represent the states, and the values represent the rewards you get for entering those states. Now, this is really all you need to solve a reinforcement learning problem as an MDP using the MDP toolbox package in R. You need the transition probabilities, and you need the reward matrix. Because from this, from these two objects, R can deduce how many states there are by, in this case, the four by four nature of these matrices. And R is also aware of the so-called domain knowledge, the rules of transitioning based on the stochastic probabilities that are in the transition list. So that loads up the reward matrix. And again, I've annotated it here so you can see. Now, there's a function in the MDP toolbox, MDP underscore check, and here's the help screen for it, but we won't call that up. What it does is it looks at the parameters that you're about to use to estimate the policy for this MDP problem, and it will tell you whether it's a valid representation of an MDP or not. And the only two parameters you have to have are the, is, are the transition probabilities and the reward matrix. And if you run them as a formal input arguments to MDP check, if you get back an empty string, it means everything is okay. 
if there's a problem with the parameter, the configurations of the parameters, it will give you an error message and generally tell you what the problem is. Okay, so now we're going to find a solution. We're going to find the best policy for this 2x2 two two grid using the MDP toolbox function MDP underscore policy underscore iteration. And we're going to add a discount factor of 0.9. We, we've discussed discount factors before, so we won't go into that in detail now, but that's all we need. And when we do that, we can look at the results. So the optimal policy maps out as 3411, and we can map that to the names of each of these actions so it's more readable to us. And note that this optimal policy is the same as that derived using the model free approaches. If we begin in S1, we go down to S2, then we go right to S3, then we go up to S4. And once we're in S4, it doesn't matter what we do because we have already maximized our rewards. And we can also, uh, let's display the value function. What the value function shows us, and we'll look at this a, a little more closely in the next video, is it shows us the value of following this policy as we move from state to state. That is, when we move in S2, S3, S4, by taking the actions chosen in the optimal policy, the value, our cumulative value, increases until it reaches 100. So in the model-based MDP approach to solving a reinforcement learning problem, you must have some knowledge of the transition probabilities. What did we do in this video? Well, we described MDP as a state model action reward framework focusing particularly on the transition model. We define the optimal policy as a state action mapping relative to rewards. And then we went through and extended our example, developing the optimal policy function for our familiar 2x2 two two grid as an MDP solution.